Well, actually, for if someone is, is, is uh, has like a G1 right now and they're thinking about upgrading, what about this is going to make them make the change? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously the G1 is a physical keyboard. Yeah. This doesn't have a physical keyboard. They both have a, a trackball and, and a touchscreen, obviously, which is great. Um, uh, we have... The, the home screen, we've added some new things. One is active wallpaper, which is really nice. You can go in, sorry, live wallpapers. Live I keep wallpaper. saying active. Live wallpapers. Um, so here's the default uh, Nexus One live wallpaper. Um, we've got five screens on the home screen. You can see two dots here, two dots here. You can go to it that way. I can scroll and I can long press to actually pick the one that I want to go to. Um, we've got more and more gadgets all the time. Here's a great news and weather gadget, excuse me, widget. Um, here is a Facebook one. I'm not signed in right now. Uh, you know, um, navigation, like it was with the Droid. Navigation is comes free with the with the um, with the Nexus One. So uh, you know, one of the great home shortcuts I like. I've got one which is just always navigate me home. If I literally touch that, it's going to tell me GPS is off. I need to turn it on because navigation is not that useful without it. But basically, here it's telling me how to get back to the Bay Area, or actually New York in this case, I think. Um, forget which I set it up for. Um, uh, step by step from here. Um, so that's on my home screen. I got lots of other customizations I can do on my home screen. Like I said, lots of widgets, wallpapers. Uh, we've got these folders. Here are all my contacts. Bluetooth stuff I've received. Facebook phone book. So now I've got a folder for. I actually I'm not signed into Facebook, but everybody in my in my Facebook that actually has a phone number. Um, 3D gallery is really great. G1 doesn't have that. Um, I only have a few things here, but it's it's um, you know, sort of 3D browsing of things. Um, I love watching video on this thing. The OLED screen is just amazing. Go what kind here. of formats does it support for video? Um, you mean the sort of codecs themselves? Yeah, like uh, that they support uh, AB, MP4, or You know, like off the top of my head, I'm not going to get it right, so okay. I would advise you to look at the website. Okay. Um, but, you know, here's a guy. I mean, just try Radio to find... Radio definitely looks very clear, yeah, though. Yeah, I mean, look at the... Looks so much you know, better than the, the G1 screen. Yeah, this is a 480 by 800 OLED screen. It's, I, mean, I think it's the highest density screen on the market. Um, yeah, 3.7 inch. Um, let's see what else we can find in here that's cool. Yeah, I mean, look at look at this background. This guy's talking with all this stuff swirling in the background. Go back. Uh, what's this one? Yeah, the media looks really phenomenal on it. There's one of Ratatouille in here I really like, but I can't, maybe it's that one. That looks really good. Yeah, it's really phenomenal. Probably not going to come through on your video, but... So, yeah, there you go. Um, and obviously, in terms of hardware, it's got an audience um, noise suppression chip, so it actually has the primary microphone, but then it has a noise cancellation one on the back. Okay. So if you've ever used like Bose cancellation headsets on an airplane or something, you're kind of familiar with that. So um, you know, not only is that great for talking on the phone, but um, you know, if I want to do a search, uh, it's really phenomenal. So if I say Italian restaurant Las Vegas, Nevada. See how it does. There's a lot of background yeah, noise here. A lot of noise right here. There's yeah. a lot, but let's see how we do. Yep. Italian restaurant, Italian restaurant Las Vegas, Nevada. There's one. Whoops. I just hit the wrong link because I'm standing to the side here. What confused me? The noise cancellation is obviously very good because it's very loud in here. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Yep. Um, you know, you go directly to. Ah, uh, yeah. You're, you're way too close to the issue. 
know, the restaurants, number of stars, click here, dial the phone, maybe I need to add a one in front or something I could, but then boom, I'm dialing, right? So um, pretty great stuff. Um, oh, and then and in, in our keyboard, we've introduced uh, voice IME, voice input method. So literally, if I'm in the browser and I'm typing on a text field, you can see I've got that little microphone down okay. there. So you could dictate as well. So yeah, those are the big differences. Now, you know, the hardware is gorgeous, and then we just keep moving the bar forward with Android 2.1. Okay. Right now, I know that it's available for T-Mobile, but do you have plans to make it available for other carriers in other countries? So, yeah, it's available on, on uh, google.com slash phone. Um, the device currently has the banding for, but, uh, for the world 3G standard, which okay. includes T-Mobile US. Um, and, uh, you know, you can currently go there and... Um, Pay less, pay $179 instead of I'm gonna get this uh, $529 okay. if you if you sign up for a two-year subscription with T-Mobile. Okay. And then grayed out on the website you see Verizon and Vodafone. So um, they've said they plan to uh, join the program as well. Okay. And um, you know you could put an AT&T SIM in this, um, okay. but because their network's different and not sort of the world standard, um, it would require different physical antenna, so you'd have 2G or 2.5G, so sort of edge network connectivity at best. Put an AT&T SIM in there. Okay. Have you done any testing with 2.1 to see if there's any uh, like 2.0 apps or 1.6 apps that have a little issues with it? We're doing that all the time with top apps, and we're in active communication with our developers okay. to um, tell them about sort of all the changes that happen as our as our platform evolves. But you know, we maintain backward compatibility as much as possible, and uh, you know, uh, while we certainly encourage developers to write apps to be compatible with as many devices as possible, and it's possible to do that. Um, you know, our, our marketplace also can filter out, uh, you know, so a, a developer can say, this is this this app works for this version of the software development kit and higher. So the, app, the market is smart about filtering out something if it doesn't run on 1.0 or 1.5, it won't show up on this device. Oh, sorry, it won't show up on those older devices. And uh, what's the battery?